Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bonus stage, Midwest Gaming Classic 2021, presented by Premium Edition Games and Hair of the Dogcast, your favorite Milwaukee podcast about beer and video games and video games and beer. Uh, we are, we have a extra special panel. Uh, I was just going to say contestant, but you are a <laughs> presenter. An extra spe- what do I win? I don't know. Uh, I made Squid Game references before, uh, so maybe that's what this is going to turn into. Uh, this is a, a topic I've been waiting to hear about. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, this is Ty Christian, one of the, uh, uh, the, the, the best uh, vocalists in Wisconsin and abroad. Yeah, he's, yeah. But uh, Ty, are you ready for this? All right, welcome to the bonus stage. Take her away, buddy. Hey, everybody, how's it going? My name's Ty. My mom always said, if you work hard, you too someday can give a presentation right next to me on the street. We did it. We did it, ladies and gentlemen. We're here. <laughs> Good to see everybody here today. Uh, a little bit about me uh, for you captive audience uh, eating people here. I'm a singer. I'm a singer for the band Lords of the Trident. Uh, we've, we just finished our 10th album. We travel the U.S. Uh, and the world. Got a Japan tour coming up next year. Uh, very excited about that. So uh, yeah, so I do I do music. I'm also the creator of the Arcade Pinball and Power Metal Festival in Madison, Wisconsin, called Mad with Power, uh, and it's been a super super fun festival to run. We're coming up on our fifth, technically sixth year if you don't count 2020, uh, and it's it's been fantastic. We've been selling out uh, pretty much every year. Uh, a little bit more about me. I've had every birthday at Aladdin's Castle until I was about 15, which is to say that I am an arcade enthusiast <laughs> or nerd or whatever. Um, interestingly enough, I, even though I'm talking about pinball today, I'm actually not heavily into pinball, if you believe it. So I'm um, not exactly you know, the, the main expert of choice here, but it's the one you've got next to meat on the street, so that's good enough for me. I'm also not good with, really, I'm not an electrical engineer, I'm not good with woodworking uh, or engineering in general. So if you're looking at this sort of thing and you're saying, you know, oh man, virtual pinball, I'd love to get into that, but I'm bad with woodworking or electrical or I feel like I'm going to zap myself. I, same, absolute same. So, but I, I also do work in IT, like, you know, probably 90% of everyone here. Uh, <laughs> so, I, you know, I do have a bit of the computer side of knowledge down. So since you're here, right, we're talking about virtual pinball today and making your own, uh, I don't have to tell you that arcade and pinball is pretty awesome. Uh, it, it, I mean, I don't know why you would come if you didn't think that, think that. There's really nothing like the look and feel and sound of a full-sized arcade or pinball machine. But these machines are expensive. They are big and heavy, especially pinball machines, and, and especially for pinball machines, you are locked into your choice of a machine, maybe forever, right? You, you can't just, some arcade machines, you can pull out boards and all of a sudden, you know, your track and field is a Pac-Man or whatever. Pinball, not quite so much, right? So there's pros and cons of having a full-size machine. The solution, of course, is emulation, at least for arcade games. Uh, arcade game emulation is easy because we've got joysticks and buttons that are simple to emulate. Uh, most of the games look and feel nearly identical to the original boards for the most part. Uh, in fact, let me see. Yeah. In fact, many classic arcades, many beer, you know, arcades, bar arcades, um, a lot of the internal guts may have been replaced with just Raspberry Pis, and not many people will know it because you know maybe they don't have access to a new board that, that fizzled out or whatnot. A lot cheaper to buy a $40 Raspberry Pi, throw it in there. There's also a plethora of USB peripherals for arcade emulation. You've got your light guns, you've got your, uh, you've got your, uh, your twisters, your spinners, your, your, your rolly balls. You know, these are all technical terms, of course. Uh, but there's a ton of USB peripherals that's uh, available. So, you know, if you don't have an arcade room, if you don't have a basement like this picture right here where you have a sprawling, gigantic space that you can put 40-plus cabinets, emulation is probably the way to go. 
for me, myself, I have somewhat of a tiny uh, a basement space here that fits two cabinets and my pinball machine. Uh, and, and like many of you, we don't have one room that's dedicated to arcades and pinball. This is a multi-use room. Uh, this is my music studio. This is where I shoot music videos as well. I've got a green screen wall in the back. This is where we hang out and play games and, and watch movies and all that sort of stuff. So this is not just an arcade. It's a multi-purpose room. So a lot of us right, don't have the availability just to throw 40 cabinets into this tiny room and call it a day. Also, our wives would kill us. So can you emulate pinball? Well, yeah, technically. I mean, everybody's familiar with the Windows XP Space Cadet pinball machine. You know, technically, that's emulating pinball. Or how about uh, Epic, uh, Epic Pinball, right? Back in the DOS days, <laughs> Ken knows. I mean, technically, that's a pinball emulation. Or even, I mean, Sonic Spinball. Technically, that's pinball emulation, right? But it's missing the feel of pinball. Pinball is inherently tactile. You have a ball rolling and hitting things. You have bumpers. You have things that are making knocks and noises and bumps and all that sort of stuff. So emulating that sort of physical feedback requires more devices and more power but it can be done. So here, enter virtual pinball. Uh, unlike Sonic Spinball and Epic Pinball games and all that sort of stuff, there is a, a program out there called Visual Pinball X uh, that is an emulated pinball experience created by enthusiasts, uh, for enthusiasts, and it is incredibly lifelike. The physics, the feel of the ball, et cetera, very, 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 very accurate. You know, there's dudes out there who have, who have 40 pinball machines in their basement who have programmed this. Um, and it can be played standalone. Why is, why is this going? Stop going. What are you doing? It can be played standalone on a PC, but it is built for cabinets, right, for building an actual uh, cabinet here. The program has a built-in support for feedback devices, so your, your, your bumpers and all that sort of stuff. It has built-in support for that. And there are hundreds, hundreds of cabinets that are freely available to download. Remakes of tons of all of your favorite, pretty much all of the cabinets that you could play next door, they've got online for free. My, my cabinet has about 360 tables in it, and it's awesome. Um, it's got extra supports. Also, one of the things visual pinball and, and virtual pinball generally can do that regular pinball generally can't is older pinball games. You can put support for videos and for media. Like my ACDC pinball uh, plays an ACDC concert live while I am playing it. It, 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 it rules. Um, question is, is it a replacement for a real pinball machine? All the guys in the back crossing their arms saying, no, <laughs> you fool. And, and I would say, no, of course it's not a replacement for a real pinball machine. But again, if you don't have a space for 40 different pinball machines, you have to pick one for the rest of your life to play in your basement, because I'm not, I'm not bringing that back up the stairs. Hell no. And my wife is not going to let me buy one more. So is it a replacement? No. But it is definitely the best next best thing. OK, cool. Let's build a virtual pinball machine together right now here at the convention. Nope, that would be too difficult. But what do you need to get started? So what is pinball generally? It's two wooden boxes. It's a top box, and it's a bottom box. There you go. Thank you. That was my talk. Good night. No, I'm, I'm, there's, there's more. So <laughs> what do you need? You need two wooden boxes. You need a top box, and you need a play field box. You need two screens. You need the long screen for the play field. That's generally a TV. And then you need a regular old, you know, uh, you can do a four by three or you can do a regular old TV uh, or a regular old monitor for the top box for your back glass. Um, you need speakers, obviously. You need a computer with a good graphics card because visual pinball to emulate all that actually takes some horsepower. Uh, you need push buttons, right, to press the flippers. And you need a controller board or interface board. Now this, what I'm talking about right here, this is the minimum build. This is the cabinet, but no feedback inside. We're going to start simple on this presentation. We're going to build up to fancy. My fancy build cost me about $1,500, $1,500 to $2,000. Uh, I did already have the computer. So just FYI, keep that in mind. OK, step one. 
on making your own virtu virtual pinball cabinet. Make some boxes. Here, I have made two boxes. Uh, to do that, I would recommend A, plan, plan, plan before you cut. Especially now, wood is kind of expensive. So make sure that you plan out your boxes before you make the cuts. Your TV size, the size of your TV in your play field will determine how big the rest of your measurements are. Because ultimately, you want to fit your cabinet around your TV. So I would recommend buying a 42 or 43 inch TV and then planning the rest of the cabinet build around how wide it is with the bezels and everything like that. The other dimensions of the boxes, you can copy your favorite pinball table. This, uh, the, 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 the pinball table here that I made is based off of a Williams Terminator 2 cabinet. So all you got to do, there are schematics online, just write down length, width, whatever, and then sort of multiply it or divide it based on uh, you know, the size of your TV that you've got in there. The top box you need for your top box, for your back glass box, you need room for one, maybe two screens and some small speakers. Uh, the bottom box, you need room for your computer, your power supply, and any of your other feedback devices, as well as the TV on the top. Uh, the scraps, right, the scraps that you have left over from cutting all this stuff make really great mounts for your TV, for your play field. Uh, you can see here on the, on the uh, picture there, I basically just took some scraps and mounted them for my TV to sort of rest on. So it just kind of rests and sits down right in there. When it's in there, it looks like this, right? So you can see it's just a cheapo Walmart TV, TLC, whatever. <laughs> uh, and I have measured it so that it fits in there really, really nicely. Next up, you paint it. Uh, and I've put in some solenoid boards. Uh, fun fact, the, the, the color red that I have picked here uh, is at Home Depot. It's called Flirt Alert. So this is Flirt Alert Red for my paintball cabinet. Um, the top box, of course, is going to be painted black uh, for the screen so you don't have any bounce back for your light uh, and all that sort of stuff. Um, I've also left a slit, if you see up at the top there, I've left a slit for some plexiglass to drop in. So when I have all of my stuff in there, I can put a nice little piece of plexiglass on top of it. Makes it look a lot more official and cool and all that sort of stuff. So you can do that too. Uh, the back I modified, I cut in half to open with a hinge. This is for access, right? So if I want to mess around with the monitors in the back there, uh, I can basically just cut, you know, just open that guy up with, a, with the, uh, the little lock there, mess around with my monitors, get them working, and then we're all set to go. So the boards that you see in here are to mount things called solenoids. We'll get into those a little bit more, but those are one of the force feedback devices. The floorboard down at the bottom is to hold the computer, to hold all the power supplies to drill stuff into, and it's got a slit for access and for a bit of vent ventilation. Um, eventually, we're going to drill holes for fans, for buttons, for all that sort of stuff. But here we go. We've got two boxes. We've got our boards in the middle for solenoids. We've got some floorboards. We're rocking and rolling. And also, uh, I added a DIY hinge to connect the top box to the bottom box. Uh, it's terrible. Don't do this. It's a really bad idea. Just buy a hinge. Don't be like me. Kids, learn from my mistakes. Um, also, of course, I, I painted it with black light paint afterwards, because who doesn't have a basement arcade full of black lights? If you don't, I don't know what you're doing with your life. It looks, it, it looks awesome. OK, solenoids. Now we're going to start getting fancy. What are solenoids? Basically, they're a piece of equipment, or a thing that you can buy, a force feedback piece, uh, that will, when electricity goes to it, part of the metal in, in the top of the solenoid will suck in. And then when electricity gets cut, it'll come back out. So it'll basically go and add those sort of force feedback knocks, right, when the electricity gets activated. These can be used for bumpers and flippers and all that sort of stuff that you'd expect to make a click or a bumping sound in your regular pinball cabinet. Like I said, they activate and thump when the program tells it. The standard build for a virtual pinball cabinet is 10 solenoids, six for the play field, so three on the back, three in the middle, and then two for the front bumpers, right, where the, where the pin, where the ball goes, bump, 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 and then two for the flippers, so 10 in total. Here is a picture of the cabinet with the solenoids in there. You'll see three in the back, three in the middle, 
two kind of in the front, and then two down by the flippers. Those are those pink things. Uh, also, for solenoids, the Siemens Contactor is your standard solenoid that most people online will tell you to buy. But it is very much not as loud as this guy, the Doghouse Arcade's Thunderclap. Uh, this is not sold online right now. You have to actually email the guy from Doghouse Arcades. He's probably got it in his basement or garage or something, and he will 3D print you some of these. Um, these are the loudest ones that I could find, and they, they rule. They're about 50 bucks each. Uh, you need power and a controller to run them, but they are amazing. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting to get fancy on our virtual pinball cabinet. What's the rest of the stuff that you got in here, Ty? Well, thanks for asking. That's transducers, speakers, and power. Now, if you look at the top here, you'll see these hockey puck type things. There's two up here, and there's two down at the bottom of my cabinet. Those are what's called a transducer speaker. They drill into something, and they will vibrate it, and they will turn whatever they're drilled into into a speaker through vibration. So you can turn the entire cabinet into one giant speaker, which rules. And the great thing about that is those are part of your 7.1 surround sound audio that comes with the game. So when the ball rolls down from the top to the bottom, you can hear it start at the top and roll brrr, down to the bottom with these speakers. It's amazing. You have to have these. These are, these are incredible. They connect to two power amps, which are right about Nia. Those are just simple power amps I bought on Amazon. In ter speaking of power, there's, uh, there's, th there's three power supplies in here, one of which can kill you. I'm not sure w which. Again, bad with electricity. Uh, but there's a 24 volt for our solenoids right there. There's a 12 volt right next to it for our lights. And then we've also got a 5 volt little guy right there to run our controller boards. Next up, we have a sane smart board. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in the next slide. So we'll skip over that for now. And then we've got a standard 2.1 surround, surround, surround sound, 2.1 regular sound computer speakers. Two speakers up here, one bass guy right there. Those are our main speakers. The Dayton Audio transducer speakers are our surround sound. These guys are our main left and, left and right out. OK, the next thing that you need for your DIY pinball is a controller board. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this in real simple terms. We're not going into the super heavy-duty, uh, nerdy stuff here. But the controller board that you need, in very simple terms, is called the Freedom FRDM KL05Z. Uh, it's 35 bucks, And it's basically a hobby board that this company made. And it's like, yo, you can program this to do whatever you want. So somebody's like, cool, I'm going to program this to be a pinball thing. And they did. You can wire in your buttons, your tilt, your plunger. This thing has uh, basically like a gyroscope or gyroscopic thing on it. I'm, again, bad with the terminology. But you can whack the pinball machine, and it will know that it's moving. So you can do tilt if you have this board. And it's 35 bucks, super cheap. Connects via USB, uh, and, and that makes it very, very easy to do. The other board that I have that you will probably need is an LED Wiz. You connect your controller, or sorry, your, your, your solenoids and your lights to this. This board will tell the computer, it connects via USB, it'll tell the computer when to activate the solenoids and the lights and all that sort of stuff in your virtual pinball cabinet. And then finally, you need a Sane Smart board. 16 bucks, so again, not super expensive. The Sane Smart Board turns on and off the power to your devices. So your solenoids, et cetera, will all be wired into here. And this board will be able to turn everything on and off to activate your solenoids, to activate your lights. Uh, it connects to the LED Wiz, and the LED Wiz tells it when to, when to fire, basically. All right, so 1,000-foot view. <laughs> because we're in front of meat on the street, I know you guys have you know, limited capacity for anything besides meat products. So I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. Here's how it all runs. There's the computer. There's the three boards. When you have this wonderful little button that you press to, like, say, activate your flippers or whatnot, that gets wired into your board right there, your freedom board. 
and that connects via USB to your computer. Super easy, you plug it in, and the computer's like, I got a joystick, cool. And then when you press it, it's like, hey, you pressed the joystick button, neat. And that's all that is, it's super easy. Next, your solenoids, the things that go bub, 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 and make the force feedback. Those get connected to your SANE smart board. Every little box, the cool thing about the SANE smart board, by the way, every little box on there, you can open, those boxes open and close and send power and cut the power to your solenoids. But you can use the SANE smart board for any voltage. You can do the same voltage, the uh, same board for solenoids, for lights, for knockers, for whatever you got in there. It's all good. So that's connecting to your SANE smart board, and that also connects to the power supply. Well, gee, Ty, how does the SANE smart board know when to fire? That's the, the job of the LED Wiz. You connect all of these controller pins down at the bottom to your LED Wiz. The LED Wiz connects to the computer. And ladies and gentlemen, you are off to the races. That's how you do it. And when it's done, it looks like this. It's a spaghetti. It's terrible. <laughs> Every, no one would be able to look at that and be like, mm, yes, of course. Very simple. Very easy. But that's how it looks when you're all done. There are other things that you can buy for your pinball machine that are optional. Plunger, right? All the pinball machines need a plunger, right? Well, virtual pinball machine, you might see some of the ones in the hall next door have just a launch ball button that you can hold down and press. Technically, you need a launch ball button. You don't technically need a plunger. I think plungers are awesome, so I got one. Don't be like me, kids. Don't buy a plunger and then be like, oh, I can wire this up myself. It's fine. I can, it, not, you know, you'll be, you'll be asking your friends to 3D print you parts. It's going to be terrible. Instead, honestly, just buy this. Uh, it is a plunger kit that comes with the Freedom Board and is already pre-wired and everything. It was 100, it's like 170 bucks. It seems expensive because you're putting together all these things for 35 bucks and whatnot. If I did it all again, I would buy this. I would not mess with trying to 3D print my own crap. Terrible, terrible idea. So the rest of the stuff that you're gonna need, buttons, etc. Best place to go for this, virtual pin, virtua pin, excuse me, dot net. There is a, a thing called the Ultimate Cab Builders Button Kit for I think 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Gives you all the buttons that you're gonna need for all of the possible cabinets you could want to run on there. Very, very nice. Uh, you could buy a, corn, a ugh, coin door, not a corn door. Two, two different things. Uh, you can buy a corn door. Corn, I keep saying corn door. I've had so many drinks. Um, I would recommend getting a coin door because you can open it up and you can access your things inside. You can turn on and off your devices. You can turn up and down your sound and stuff like that. You can also buy legs at virtuapin.net. Uh, also, very important, remember ventilation. Everything in there is going to get hot, especially if you're running a high-end PC. And your TV will yell at you if there's not enough ventilation, and it will eventually shut off or fry itself. I, I know this from experience. So remember, ventilation. You're going to need to throw some fans in there and keep the air moving. You'll notice at this point, I, I haven't really talked about software at all. This has all been building the cabinet, putting the buttons in, doing all the solenoids and all that sort of stuff, right? What about the software? Actually, honestly, the reason I haven't talked about the software very much, that was the easiest part. All you need to do is get, this, uh, is get the pin up popper baller installer. It's one EXE, and basically you just double click on it and installs everything in the right areas. That w this was the simplest part of the build. So pin up popper baller installer. If you want to look at more things that you can throw into your virtual pinball cabinet to make it cooler or more force feedback or whatever, or if I glossed over something very quickly, which clearly I did, check out the Pinscape uh, build guide. That's at mjrnet.org. Or just type in Pinscape build guide into Google. This will tell you how to basically put everything together on this, uh, on any virtual pinball mach machine that you're going to want to build. What kind of computer do I need? You need a good one. Thank you. Uh, I'd recommend you need, uh, you got to get an NVIDIA GTX 1080 or better, uh, especially if you're going to be running your TV at 4K, which, you know, 
is pretty cool, and I would recommend that you do that. But you're going to need some horsepower to run a TV that big and to run. Also, bear in mind, you've got two extra screens to run on top of your main play field. So you've got to have something with a lot of outs. You've got to have something with a lot of horsepower. I'd recommend having a good computer, a recent computer, with a good video card if you're going to run virtual pinball. Other resources. Right, because 25 minutes of me talking about virtual pinball is probably not going to be enough for you to go out and build one. Uh, I would recommend on YouTube, Vic underscore VP has some great build guides. Major Frenchie has some wonderful build guides. And Nailbuster is kind of the OG of virtual pinball. Uh, go check out any of those people and uh, watch their guides. I basically watch their guides to build mine. Cool. Where do I download all of those cool virtual pinball tables? They're called VPX files. There's a couple of great resources. My absolute favorite, vpdb.io, virtualpinballdatabase.io is my favorite. But you can download them all over the, the net. Just type vpx download, you'll find it. Virtual pinball download, vpuniverse, vpforums.org, great resources. Uh, that is my time today. This is a real quick overview of my virtual pinball build. Uh, if you guys got anything amazing out of this, uh, if you want to help support me and the band, uh, patreon.com slash lords of the trident. We're at lords of the .com. If you feel like coming to Mad with Power Fest next year in August, you very much should. It's in Madison, Wisconsin. Arcade, pinball, heavy metal, two days. Everything's on free play. You're going to love it. That's at madwithpowerfest.com. We have uh, socials on the internet. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Twitch and Twitter and all those sort of stuff. Uh, go check us out. If you have any questions about anything, please come grab me. I will uh, talk about it in insane detail towards you. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for having me. I hope you got something out of this. And thanks very much to the Hair of the Dog cast for being fantastic people. Thank you very much, Ty. Everyone, one more time, give it up for Ty Christian.